Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am finally gonna be bringing you guys my review of the new line at Target called Finery. So if you're interested in seeing what my thoughts are and which ones I decided to pick up, then just keep on watching. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Oshumare. On this channel, I talk about all things smell goods. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you leave today, as well as give this video a thumbs up. And if you are a returning viewer, hey, it is so good to see you and thank you so much for all the love and continued support of my channel. All right, you guys, so it took everything inside of me not to give you guys my review of this line like last week or the week before that because I did get it as soon as one of my subbies told me that this line was dropping. And so I really wanted to wait and play around with these fragrances because sometimes you get a fragrance, you think you love it, and then you get home and you change your mind and vice versa. And then also sometimes you get something and you think it smells absolutely amazing and it lasts for about two seconds. So I wanted to test out the longevity, all of the makings of a fragrance. And so now that I've done that, I can now come and give you guys my real in-depth thoughts. I ended up picking up one body mist, but the rest of the ones that I picked up were the fine fragrances. I also did take notes of the ones that I decided to pass on, but we'll get into those at the end of this video. But without further ado, let's jump into the ones that I did get. So the first one that I decided to pick up was kind of like a no-brainer to me because it falls into line with all of the notes and the fragrances that I love for the fall and the winter and kind of like all year round and this one is called sweet on the outside and sweet on the outside is literally super sweet you get vanilla from it it's a little spicy because of that musk but then in the dry down in this one you get so much marshmallow and what i love about these fragrances excuse this busted bottle by the way because i was breaking these things open i was so excited but they all look like absolute trash my bad but what i love about these is that they all have a scent experience like a description of the perfume on the back as well as what it smells like like the notes and this scent experience is described as a hypnotic and delicious veil of smoky vanilla and it smells like Madagascar vanilla, tonka bean, and smoked vetiver. But I promise you guys, it smells like there is some type of marshmallow note in here. That is so yummy. And this one is said to be a dupe for Billie Eilish by Billie Eilish, which I have right here. And I do have to say, I am so in love with this one. And this one smells just like it. And this one is already on the lower end in comparison to other fragrances. This one I think is about $70 and this is the biggest bottle that they have. This is a two ounce, but it's $27.99 y'all. That is really, really good. This one definitely smells like spot on to Billie Eilish. And the longevity of this is really, really good. I was smelling it for hours on top of hours. Some of the longevities of these are better than some. I would say this is definitely one that lasts a long time. At least on my skin, it lasts six plus hours. So I think that that's really good. Also, another thing that I thought was really cool about these is that when you go into the store, on the stand, it says that these are luxury perfumes inspired by fragrance icons and they are crafted to last. So once again, I think that sweet on the outside, if you love vanilla, any type of vanilla, if you like Billie Eilish, if you like whipped cream and marshmallow and fluffy notes like that, I think that you would absolutely love sweet on the outside. And if you don't have Billie Eilish, but you had been wanting to get it, I think that you would be very highly satisfied with this one. The next fragrance that I picked up is one that I'm wearing today. And I saw my brother today and when he came in for a hug, he said, oh, you smell so good. What you got on? Did you mix another two perfumes or is that just one perfume? <laughs> um, and this one is called Jungle Santal. And I think that this one is so good. But I will say that you do have to smell this one before you just go out and get it. For me, however, I had my eye on a fragrance that smells very similar to this one. I can't remember who it's by, but I know it's a clean beauty fragrance. And it's called Number 4 by Maison Louis. I can't remember, but I'll link it in the description below. That one smells so similar to this one that when I smelled it, I was like, oh my gosh. Like I literally had number four on my list of perfumes to get for the springtime. And so when I smelled this one, I, I was like, what? Oh my gosh, it's that same type of vibe. And it's 
at a much better price. And the scent experience for this one says that it is the lush and steamy air of an exotic sultry rainforest. And this one has notes of papyrus wood, Indian cardamom, and black oolong tea. And you definitely get that oolong tea in here. This is a very green scent. So you 100% are getting that woodsiness of it. This one is said to be a dupe for Santal 33, which is by Le Labo. I have never smelled that one, but I know that people say that it kind of has like a pickle undertone to it. And this one definitely has a pickle undertone to it. I mean, if you like this type of scent profile and you've smelled either one of those perfumes, then go smell this. I would think that for that type of person, this would be a safe blind buy because it smells just like those. And I only have a sample of number four, the fragrance that I was gonna get. And so what I did was I sprayed one hand with that and then I sprayed this on the other hand. And the similarities were crazy. And what was also interesting to me, you guys, was that number four didn't last that long. Like literally almost right after I sprayed it, it kind of started disappearing already. Whereas this one, it was way more of a bolder opening and it performed for hours. Whereas number four was long gone. And this one was still hanging around. So, I mean, that says something. Not saying that I'm not still thinking about getting number four because I would still love to have that in my collection because I think it's just a very pretty scent for the spring and the summertime. And that one is a clean beauty fragrance line, but I really don't need to get that one because this one smells so similar. So if you like those type of scent profiles, I think that you can't go wrong with Jungle Santal. I am very happy to have this one in my collection. The next fragrance that I decided to add to my collection is actually the only body mist that I got and this one is called Sunphoria. And what I really like about these bottles is that whether you get the mist or you get the perfume, the bottles look the same. This one is all plastic, plastic bottle, plastic top. And this is a glass bottle with a plastic top. And this one's two ounces and this is five ounces, but this is a body mist, it's not gonna last as long. Whereas I will say some of these body mists are very potent and they do have good longevity, but not as good as the perfume. So Sunphoria has notes of orange blossom, Manoi oil, and amber wood. You definitely are getting summertime sunscreen vibes. You're definitely getting that Manoi in here. I was kind of going back and forth between this one because I was kind of like, eh, I'm not really sure if I want it or not. And this one is said to be a dupe for Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, which I do have in my collection. And I must say, but they smell really similar. Mm -hmm. Now Tom Ford Soleil Blanc is definitely creamier, but this is definitely one of my favorite perfumes for the spring and the summertime. It's just gorgeously done. And it also has like a slight sunscreenness to it. However, this one is more refined and just more elegant. Whereas this one, it's way more sunscreeny, but it's still really good. Cause I mean, Tom Ford y'all, it's like, $300, $300, $400. This body mist was what, $14.99? And if you get the perfume, it's $27.99. I mean, for this to be compared to something that is hundreds of dollars, why would you pass it up? I think that that is a great deal. Okay, you guys, so now we are getting into my favorite pick. So the next one that I picked up is called Not Another Cherry. And y'all, this is sold out everywhere. I'm so sorry if you can't get your hands on it, but I would just say stop the website because this one is said to be a dupe for, not surprisingly, Lost Cherry by Tom Ford and you guys. I don't have that perfume, but I've smelled it in Sephora multiple times. It smells so close. What? And y'all know that that one is like almost $400, you guys. So once again, $27.99? How did they do this? That just goes to show these companies, they be playing this, y'all. And we fall right into it. We fall right into that hole. But not to take away from the glory of not another cherry. So if you are looking for a super sweet, syrupy, almondy fragrance, I think that you should look no further and you should go to Target's and get you some of this whenever it is available. The scent experience on this one is described as that last decadent bite of an amaretto soaked cherry. Mm. And this one smells like wild cherry, Turkish rose, and almond amaretto. And I think what I am loving about the twist of this one is that added rose in here. 
it just gives it a little extra something. And every single time that I've worn this, which I don't know if you guys could tell, I've had this for what, maybe two weeks? And my dent is denting for me. Do you guys see where my dent is already? And that's pretty good for a fragrance that you just got when you have a nice size collection of fragrances. But this one is just so yummy and scrumptious smelling. And when I initially smelled this one, I will say that it reminded me a lot of another cherry fragrance that I have in my collection, which is Kaali's Love Fest Burning Cherry. And don't let this non-dent fool you because I always start out with the travel sizes of a lot of my fragrances, which that one is in my purse right now. I should have got it for you guys, but I forgot. But this fragrance is an absolute love of mine. I think it's so well done. And I feel like if Love Fest Burning Cherry and Lost Cherry by Tom Ford were to have a love child, that love child would be not another cherry. It is so, so good. I do feel like Lost Cherry is like a little bit more syrupy, whereas this is syrupy still, but it's more of like a sugariness to it. And it might be that almond amaretto that's like adding to the sweetness. It's still very syrupy, but I think that it is its own fragrance and it's a mix of those two. You can get your hands on it. Definitely don't even think about it. If you are a cherry lover, you are going to love this fragrance, girl. The next fragrance that I picked up was one that I wasn't giving any love when I went into the store. Well, I think I might have sprayed it on me once, but because I sprayed so many other fragrances on me, I couldn't really differentiate which was which. And so I kind of just pushed this one to the side and was just like, oh, whatever, I don't want that. Until I went back the last day and I just sprayed this one on its own and I was blown away. I was just like, girl, what is, that's what we doing. And the perfume that this is supposed to be a dupe of, I'm just like, what? I don't, I don't know any other fragrance houses that have made a dupe to this one, but I will say I am new to the dupe houses. This is my first dupe house that I've ever experienced, but this one smells so amazing, you guys. And this one is called Before the Rainbow. First off, I love how aquatic and bright in summertime this bottle is. And the sit experience for this one says that it is the refreshing calmness after the rain. And it smells like salty air, bergamot, and tree moss. So this is definitely a salty, airy, beachy scent that is just perfect for spring and summer. And this one is said to be a dupe for Joe Malone's Wood Sage and Sea Salt. And I must say, it's like dead on, you guys. It's like like unbelievably spot on. So I love the House of Joe Malone and I don't have a full bottle of Wood Sage and Sea Salt um, because I have so many minis of that one. So I don't know if you guys have ever ordered on the Joe Malone website, but if you have, they always throw in a few minis for you. Either they pick them for you, but a lot of times you're able to pick your own. And I always default to Wood Sage and Sea Salt. And literally I have like four or five of these. I have two in my bedroom and then I have others that are like spread out in my purse. But because I have so many of these little ones, I've never felt inclined to go get a full bottle. And these little minis, they last me forever. This one is like halfway done, if you could see that. And then this one is like, pretty close to the top. And these are just two that I have, but I love this fragrance. I think this fragrance is just so crisp, gorgeous, and it's uplifting and salty and just airy. And it's got a little bit of woodiness to it, but I think that this fragrance has always been beautiful to me. This is like a very easy reach. However, I will say, and I'm sorry to say this, Joe Malone, cause I love you. But wood sage and sea salt does not have the best longevity, unfortunately. Before the rainbow? I mean, this one is sticking around before the rainbow, during the rainbow, after the rainbow. I mean, she is just holding onto your skin and never letting go, honey. This one is got amazing projection as well as longevity. We're talking six, seven, eight hours at least on my skin but that is very, very impressive. I don't know how I passed up on this one the first day that I went to Target, but I'm so happy that I went back in and I sprayed it because like I said, I don't have a full bottle of wood sage and sea salt. And I've always kind of contemplated like, should I just get a full size? I don't know, I have all these minis. But now that I have this, 
I really don't need to go get this. This one also kind of has like a, almost like a bit more of a sweetness to it as well. Whereas this one, it's not bitter, but it's just kind of, it's a bit, just a bit flatter than this one. They're both really good. Definitely have nothing bad to say about this one except for the longevity not being the best. But that's never stopped me from getting any of the Jo Malone fragrances. All that being said, if you can get a fragrance that smells like this without this price tag, because even Jo Malone's fragrances that are not like the full size bottles like this one, these are like $100. And then the full size, I believe are about 155, 160. So to be able to get a fragrance that is closer to $200 for $27.99, and the longevity is better than the one that is a hundred plus dollars. I would say run, don't walk to Target because this is a hidden, well, it's not hidden anymore. It's, I think it's all gone. But if you can get your hands on this one, I would highly recommend for the rainbow. It smells so, so similar to wood sage and sea salt. And it's just, it's a really, really good one. Okay, so we are at the last fragrance that I picked out. And if you can't tell, I'm really excited about this last one, but the last one that I picked up, ugh, which is my absolute favorite of them all, is Magnetic Candy. Oh my gosh, if you like super sweet cotton candy, marshmallow, orange blossom scents, then you are going to love this fragrance. Oh, this is another one in the line that every time I smell it, I just want to spray myself with it. It is just fun and super sweet. Oh, this is the one that made me want to go to Target and get a fragrance because I read the notes in this one and I was like, oh yeah. Like, and then I read what it was supposed to be compared to. And I love all of those fragrances. And so in this fragrance, we have sugared violet, pink pomelo and cotton candy and the scent experience and this one says that it is a nostalgic escape into a neon candy fantasy mm -hmm. i mean literally it's like everything that it just said on the back of this box describes it to a t this is like being in a candy shop or like at a fair and there's like cotton candy in front of you and like someone is roasting marshmallows and you are like getting the whiff of the marshmallows but then like all the other candy that's there that's what this smells like. It's said to be a dupe for Prada Candy, as well as Love Don't Be Shy by Killian and Oriana um, by Parfums de Marley. And to my nose, I said no, I don't think it's an exact dupe to any of those. However, I would say that if Oriana and Pink Sugar got together and they had a little baby, bam this would be the love child it smells amazing now i will say off of initial spray when i first smelled it it smelled a little too sweet to me and i actually went in the store specifically for it and walked out without it because i was like mm, no however y'all know i sprayed it on me and when i got home i kept smelling my arm but i'd sprayed like all the other fragrances on me. And so I didn't really know which one that was that I was smelling. So then I got back online and I started reading the notes and all the fragrances. And when I heard what this one was compared to, it dawned on me, oh my gosh, this one is so much better in the dry down again. The dry down is always getting me. I Eventually I'm gonna learn, but yeah. Off of initial spray, I was just like, that's a little too sweet for me. Like it just, it literally smells like candy. But then when it dries down, it smells so similar to Love, Don't Be Shy and Oriana. But either way, I think that it is a great, fun, upbeat, orange blossom, cotton candy, marshmallow scent, and it stands on its own. So this is my number one that I would highly, highly, highly recommend to all my sweet, sugary, gourmand lovers. And once again, that is Magnetic Candy. And so those are all the fragrances that I picked up. There were three that I decided to pass on. I passed up on those because either I have something that smells way too similar and I didn't want something else in my collection that smelled like it, or I was just like, man, I've smelled that way too many times. I'm not interested in adding something else like that in my collection. And the first one was Midnight Cafe. And Midnight Cafe is said to be a dupe for black opium. And I like black opium, but I no longer have it in my collection. And I'm just tired of smelling that scent profile. And so <laughs> I passed on that one. But if you want to know what that one smells like, it smells like black opium. It smells really good. If you don't have black opium, you really have wanted to get it, then I would suggest Midnight Cafe.
The next one that I decided to pass on is one called I'm a Musk and it's in a beautiful white bottle. I was very tempted to get it because of that white bottle, but because that one is a dupe of Molecule 01, which I've never smelled, as well as Cloud, which I do have, that one's by Ariana Grande. I really didn't feel like I needed something else that had that same scent profile. I will say though, as I was wearing I'm a Musk, it did slightly turn to like that like pickly note. And it started to remind me of like a mix of Ariana Grande's fragrances. And the two that it reminded me of was Cloud as well as Thank You Next. And this one has that pickly note in it. And um, yeah, I feel like if I wanted that type of scent profile, I could just mix Thank You Next and Cloud and I would have I'm a Musk. And so I decided to pass on that one. And the last one that I decided to pass on, which was actually a very pretty scent, is called Flower Bed. And Flower Bed is supposed to be a dupe for Chance Otandra, which I also do have Chance Otandra. And this is one of my absolute favorite fragrances for the spring and the summertime. And just in case you wanted to know, some of the notes in this one is Lush Peony, Green Apple, and Wild Bamboo Leaf. It does smell really really good i must say and it kind of has its own twist but because it smells so similar to this one i just passed on that and that is it for today's video you guys so those are all of the fragrances and the mist that i decided to get i overall am very 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 excited about this new line at target i love how they have some fragrances that are dupes to fragrances that are some of our favorites that you don't really get dupes of so that definitely makes me really excited to see what else this line is possibly going to do in the future what other fragrances they are going to do um and i am very very impressed with them so i'm very happy with all the fragrances that i picked up i love the longevity of most of them and i would highly suggest them to you guys if you guys have never smelled them i would say go to target and you know get your sniff on play around with them i'm pretty sure that you will find something in the bunch that you will love comment down below let me know did you guys pick up any of these are you guys interested in this fragrance house or are you guys like it's another dupe house i'm over it i hope that you guys have fun hanging out with me today as much as i have fun hanging out with you don't forget if you are not subscribed to subscribe to my channel become a part of the family and as always take care of yourself god bless you all and i will see you on the next one bye